Hey everyone, Jeff McElhane here, and today I'm going to show you one of the coolest blues riffs of all time. <laughs> Now, I'm sure that lick sounds familiar. It's pretty ubiquitous. The first time I'm aware of that lick played on an electric guitar is by the Great Muddy Waters, and the tune is called Rolling Stone Blues. And it was recorded in the 50s on Chess Records, so definitely check that out. If it also sounds familiar, Hendrix took that lick, played it on the Hendrix Blues record, and called it Catfish Blues. Now, with blues lyrics, you probably notice a lot of them are very similar to each other. They had these kind of themes that floated around, and people did versions of these tunes. Catfish Blues, Rolling Stone Blues, very similar lyrics, same concept, basically the same tune. Now, what's also cool about that lick is if we turn it around, and I'll show you it a little bit later, it is Voodoo Child. We also hear variations upon that lick in tunes like Lenny Kravitz, Are You Gonna Go My Way, ZZ Top's Brown Sugar from ZZ Top's first record, which I love, and please check that out if you're not familiar with it, ZZ Top's first record. Now, the main point of this video is to learn a lick, but I want to help you build the skill of playing a blues by yourself, an unaccompanied blues. It's one of the most important things I've ever worked on. I think I do it pretty much every day of my life for years and years now. And I think it's really helped form the way I play the guitar. It's also really cool to just sit down and be able to play. You don't have to have a back down track. You don't have to have a band. Just you laying it down. Okay, so let's check out the lick. I'm going to play it for you. Three, four, and one. <laughs> Now the lick is one bar long and you can get the tab for it by using the link below. It's going to start on a downbeat, so it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So now real slowly I'm going to play my low E string and I like to do an upstroke on that up B. So I'm going to grab my E string and my B string. I'm going to take my second finger. I'm thinking of an E minor pentatonic scale in the open position. So it's going to be the low note, top two. I'm going to write into this bend and release to a pull off. I'm going to bend the A up, release, pull off, and then straight to this E note right here. Now when you practice that, you want to hear it as one move or one thought. Let's get that first half of that phrase. Now to finish this off, we're going to go to our low E string. So let me hear that first half of the phrase. Three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one. So it's one, and two, and three. So we're hitting that downbeat on beat three with the low E string. So it's one, and two, and three, and four, and... So let's get that last lick. So, and four, and... and we're going to do what we call a flam. Our drummers call it a flam. It's a quick hammer-on from the open D string. So I'm going to have... Start that lick. E, G. I'm going to slightly bend my G. I'm going to hammer-on from D to E. And repeat it. So now you really want to work on getting that groove. Take it nice and slowly. And as you probably notice, I'm muting a lot of the low strings with my right hand. Right here with the heel of my hand, the side right there. Now the reason why, if I don't, watch. that sounds pretty terrible. All those notes ringing out on top of each other is not cool. 
Also though, these lower notes are functioning like the bass drum. Remember, we're playing this by ourselves. Now I want to work on this. that so important? Well, that's like a heartbeat. That's what's holding it all together. Now, of course, to help you with that, I have a course called Solo Blues Guitar, which is on sale. You can get that using the link above or below. Also, while you're there, check out Jam Guitar Lessons, and you can check out my Arpeggios Unlocked free ebook and mini course. Now, if you listen to Rolling Stone Blues by Muddy Waters, especially when he's singing, it's basically what he's doing. <laughs> Even just in the low E string. Now, why is he doing that? Well, he's singing. So when somebody's singing, we really want to reduce what it is we're playing. It's just going to be too much. So this is really more supportive. This is swing eighth. One and two and three and four and two. So it's got that like, we call it a flat tire groove sometimes. You got like one shoe on, one off. And boom, boom. Boom, boom, as opposed to bum, 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 a straight groove like that, which doesn't sound bluesy at all, right? So this, that's the heartbeat. So there's two things to work on. You got the tab, use the link down below. There's the full lick. And then the simplified. Now I say simplified, I mean the reduced version of the lick. Sitting into that groove is not easy to do. Play along with the original recordings. Definitely play along with the Hendrix Blues version because you got the drums to hold it together and then just turn off the track and work on it on your own. Now a key element to playing this well is to think about dynamics. I'm speaking to you now, right? And my voice goes up and down. It keeps you hopefully interested in what I'm saying as opposed to me talking to you like this the whole time and just not being monotone, and not, right? Guitar is the same exact thing. So if I played that monotone, <laughs> Right? Not great, but if I play with some dynamics. So all those cool variations just with the dynamics make it the difference between just playing some notes and playing some living, breathing, cool music. So now, as I mentioned earlier, let's check out a cool variation. Hendrix took the same lick but turned it around, sped it up. So the muddy version. Now what Hendrix did, he went. Pretty cool, right? So he took the second half and put it first. Same lick, just changed up the feel a little bit, but you know, well, I'm assuming that's where he got it from. He, they were friends and he was completely influenced by that. So I'm assuming that's where Jimmy got it from. I could be wrong. Now to show you a little bit further, I'm gonna take an open E minor blues scale. And play that lick and kind of mess around. And that's something like Billy Gibbons played at the beginning of Brown Sugar. So if you like the video, please hit the like and subscribe button as it helps me out quite a bit. Also, if you like this and you want to learn more about playing blues by yourself, extremely important, please check out my solo blues course, which is available on sale right now using the link above or below. 
over at JM Guitar Lessons. Also, you can check out my Arpeggios Unlocked free ebook and mini course. Until the next time, I'm Jeff Macarlane, and I will see you then. Thank mm-hmm. you.